I'm a researcher in Trinity College in Dublin and I've got a research fellowship so I'm starting up a research group in genomics research and I'm really interested in um, and had to learn very fast I suppose about all the different aspects that are really important um, for starting up your own genomics research group and in particular in recruiting family families and patients into our research and I've had a lot of benefit from the cost networks from learning a lot so I'm really glad to be here today and um, I think we've ran some events with families recently and everybody was really keen to be really involved in genomics research but it was very clear that people were really keen to learn and to be involved but that um, the importance of understanding genomics and genetics and genomic literacy is uh, very key to make sure people really understand properly sorry and um, so and I guess in the Irish media in particular and I'm sure it's the same all over Europe where there's lots of stories you know superficial stories about genomics research about ancestry DNA and people are getting the really wrong idea or they're not understanding correctly or they are totally getting the right idea and they just need to have more information at hand so that's why I think genomic literacy is really important and that's the next so yeah as and um, that's we're really keen here today i suppose to see what you guys think of it and how it is in other countries and um of course many health professionals will not have formal teaching in genomics or genetics during their training but i think there's definitely an interest there i mean plenty of med students that come and work in my group and they're always really interested but of course genomic technologies and everything that surrounds genomic technologies all the research contract agreements, everything else that goes with that are um, progressing really quickly and there's new terms all the time that are really, even for a geneticist like myself, is complicated to get to grips with. But of course, we need to be able to understand that and to relay that. And um, of course, this workshop focuses on CMVs today that are, are widely used genetic tests and particularly for developmental delay and autism. And recently, a Canadian study showed, a quite small study of in that medical oncologists and uh, had a low to moderate level of genetic, genetic literacy but those surveyed uh, thought that gen genomics research would see would really progress drug discovery and treatment within the next fi five years and 42 percent of them had said they'd limited teaching in genomics in medical school and while medical students were found to have a good understanding of basic knowledge there's still a lot more work to be done and while testing for cmvs in develop and uh, the dna dsd has become standard it's there's still a lot of work to be done of course so today's job um what we're going to do is um we're gonna it's just a warm-up exercise i suppose to see what everyone thinks or so if you have the slido app you can either get it on your phone in the play store or app store or if you've got your laptop you can just log on to slido Okay, so 16 people have answered. I don't know if that's... Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So move on to the next one. So I'm going to stop that. And then um, we'll maybe just go on to the actual... So this then, you see there's an, another poll that has come up. And this is based on a work, a genomic literacy survey that the University of North Carolina have developed and published on it. And um, they've shown really good reproducibility about it. these are the types of questions to understanding genomics. So if you can answer uh, which of them aren't true, so you just click yes or no. And then the results are going to come up here. And then we'll have an idea then of how people think. Or... So it's which are not true. Yeah, which are not. If it's not okay. true. Yeah. Confusing, is that which one? <laughs> Yes. Correct, <laughs> yeah. I think there's only seven of them, that's a hint. <laughs> I guess the idea is just to start a conversation and to see that we all have knowledge, but some of it may be incomplete and some things are, are, can be confusing. So this is just a list of all the questions that we have. And you can see where some people have said, uh, some of us have said, uh, most gene variants will affect a person's health. Oh, it's changing in real time. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, oh, there it is again. Yeah, great. Thanks a million, everyone, for taking part. In it. It's got a bit of a trial version, but hopefully it's a really nice way of just to think of the things that you think you know and yeah. just to get an idea of everyone's thoughts in the rooms. And like even so variants of unknown significance are CNV that are benign. So 32% are, are saying that that's false, which means that the other people who voted didn't think that that was false. Yeah, or they couldn't do it on the app. So apologies about yeah, that. True, well, we know yeah. that. Um, yeah, or everyone has a chance for having a child with genetic uh, disorder, you know, 20%, one in five of us um, had said that. Or sorry, was, that's not true. That's not true, yeah. Most genes will affect a person's health, saying that that's not true. Yeah, is it that or we just don't know yet? You know, it's a, so there's a lot of stuff that we don't know, but we, we need to think about if a CMA test is negative, there's no genetic cause for the person's condition. So that's false. So that's true. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. We learn as not being true. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So that's great. So I think everyone's got an overall understanding. But there is uh, some uh, plenty of room there to learn more and to understand yeah. more. Was there anything more there, Louise, that you wanted no, to pick up on there? You think? Lauren, just to go down and say which ones are true or false. Yeah, yeah. so some people would like to. Oh, right, okay, okay. So, okay, so if a. Is that the first one? Yeah. Are they all there? Are they, they may not all be there. They may not all be yeah. there, yeah. So, if a parent has a harmful gene variant, all of his or her children will inherit it. So, we said that wasn't true. And of course, that's not. Say that again, sir. Depends. Yeah, of course, it depends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if only then the next one, if only one person in the family has a disorder, it can't be genetic. But of course, we know about de novo variations and that's considered genetic. So that's uh, variants that are only found in children, but not in the adults. And that happens spontaneously. Um, so two, then the next question two unrelated people with the same genetic variant will always have the same symptoms. Um, that's not true, and everyone understood that. I'm trying to think in my head. <laughs> yeah. the, the, so the, double uh, the double negative. Yeah, exactly. Um, genetic disorders are always inherited from a parent. Um, false. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can be de novo vari variants. I don't know. Is this useful going through every one of them? Yeah. Um, everyone who has a harmful gene variant will eventually have symptoms. Which is not true. Which is not true. Yeah, yeah. There's many reasons for that. Um, if the CMA test is negative, there's no genetic cause for the person's condition. It's not fully comprehensive, the CMA test, so there's many other reasons. And I mean, from my point of view, I suppose that's why we do whole genome sequencing as well, to be able to pick up uh, uh, lots of other genetic variants that wouldn't be able to be picked up in a CMA test. Um, a mother or daughter who look alike are more genetically similar than a mother and daughter who do not look alike. No, because it's it's not true because it's more than just appearance <laughs> for genetics. Um, variants of unknown significance of are, are C and V that are benign. Um, I mean, we're going to hear more about variants of unknown significance today. It's critically important. So. Um, and it's such a moving field as well. I'm, I'm really looking forward to hearing more about that today. Um, everyone has a chance for having a child with a genetic disorder. Yes, of course, I guess some people are more prone than others. Um, but we all have a chance. But we all absolutely yeah. have a chance, yeah. Um, most gene variants will affect a person's health. That's false. Um, but of course, we just, there's three billion genetic pair or three billion base pairs in our genome. So we just are only begin to get an understanding of a small bit of what they do. So who knows if one of your parents is a gene variant, your brother and sister may also have it. That's false, but it's true. No, no. It's true. true. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Yeah. CMV cause silencing of genes in the region affected. That's false. Yeah. That's false. Yeah. Because they, yeah. Mm-hmm. Increase the increase the, the overexpression, yeah. yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, some gene variants have a large effect on health, of course, and others have a small effect. Um, I should have more examples. And 
see, like you say, our CMVs are structural rearrangements causing changes in the numbers of copies of DNA in a genomic region. Yeah, Louise is nodding her head. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, gene variants can have positive effects, harmful effects, or no effects on health. True. True, yeah, of course. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Audience participation. <laughs> yeah. uh, some gene variants decrease the chance of developing a disorder. True. Yeah, CMVs may be deletions, duplications. We'll hear more about that during the day. CMVs can be inherited or arise in an individual for the first time. Yes, gene variants that are identified today may have different implications in the future, absolutely. And that's what research is all about. And it's a moving target again. Is that nearly everything? Oh, and we have 20. Thank you very much for taking part. And if you want to learn more, this is the, uh, the study on genomic knowledge scale. And, um, and it talks about the importance of learning about genomic knowledge scale. And so this is just something fun that might look really nice. So that the idea is that I say genetic, you say what comes first into your head. And like we might have loads of just, I don't know, words like, I don't know, I got my husband to do it last night and he was like plants, chromosomes, mutations, because he's a plant geneticist. But like everyone here is a really diverse group, but lots of different experience with genetics. So if it was me, I'd be putting in whole genome sequencing, ACGT, this kind of thing. and. I'm sure you all are aware of uh, word clouds. And I guess the idea is then we can show at our Minds workshop today what most people want to learn about or if there's anything new or... Yeah, look, that's really nice. Complicated, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah variation disorder. Yeah, because people automatically think genetic, they think disorder, but of course... Um, there's so much to learn about ancestry DNA and yeah I guess so just I suppose briefly if anybody wanted to let Louise and I know if the questions were too easy if there were <coughs> questions that were surprising or particularly terms that were misunderstood to have a discussion about that or <laughs> I was surprised at how badly I phrased the question oh no <laughs> well you can blame Langer <laughs> Yeah, so apologies about that. Hi, that's yeah, no, I think actually it's, nice. it's, it's interesting to see that it's slightly ambiguous when you're reading it like that. So, you know, yeah, you have to yeah, think, you have yeah, to think, think, yeah. Because yeah. people ask questions in that way yeah. as well, so people want to know, yeah. I think my final slide was just, if you have any ideas that you think we could bring up today and we can talk about later, there's an ideas part of the Slido app. If you have any questions you want us to talk about or say never use Slido again or anything like that, <laughs> just let us know. Um, yeah, and in particular, I guess we're, we're here today. Do you have any worries about feeding back variants of unknown significance? The kind of concerns that we have here in Ireland, but in all the other countries in Europe as well. And, and what kind of influence, of course, do you think testing for CMVs has had on your practice? So then you can, it, just in the ideas section of the Slido app, you can type in any little, que not any, any questions that you have. So, of course, the first one, no, too much uncertainty. I mean, um, maybe we could just put up a few questions here and then after the talks, discuss them again, because yeah. then people might have more information and have more, more ideas. Yeah. Yeah, like I really liked that first question there and, you know, someone else has liked it. So it's obviously a question <coughs> that everyone's worried about. And, of course, that's really important we can think of parental age or I think that's great isn't it there's 10 people have asked plenty of questions and there's really nice themes there that I think we're going to talk about during the rest of the day and in particular for our focus groups as well I think it'd be really interesting to hear yeah. what everyone's talk, thought of will we keep these in mind then I for the rest so, of yeah. the day and They're if anybody can add in that'd be great can, probably, can you leave that poll open yeah exactly yeah yeah, yeah you can you, you can yeah. add in yeah yeah and then we'll definitely come back and have a discussion at the end of the day, do you think? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So so. We'll, we'll try. We'll try. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Mm.